phono preamp, which is called PPA2. Viewed from the rear, of course, we have an IEC power inlet that allows you to use the stock power cord it comes with or any level of upgraded power cord as, as you might wish. It is universal voltage, so there's a switch on the bottom for 115 or, or 230 volts. Since this is an all analog product internally, we use a linear power supply and a custom toroidal power transformer. We'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute. It has an auxiliary power output jack here to run Miracord turntables. So the current Miracord 90 and other turntables in the line can draw their DC power from the funnel preamp, and that's actually a better quality power supply than the one that comes with the turntable stock. Um, so that's an important feature for, for Miracord owners. One of the most significant features the, the product offers is the ability to get system noise down to an absolute minimum. And one of the ways it does that is you'll note that it has two independent ground lugs. And that's unusual on a phono preamp. Typically you just have one. In this particular case, you have the, the typical one, which is called on the printing, it's called chassis ground. And that attaches to the entire outer enclosure of the unit. So it does act like an overall shield. But actually, internally, the circuit board isn't electrically connected to the chassis ground. It, it, it's what called it's, it sits above ground by a certain amount. And that is called signal ground. So we have a separate ground lug here, which connects to the signal ground of the circuit board. If you have access to two ground wires, the plinth or motor ground would typically go to the chassis. And that's what provides the overall hum shield. The analog ground, which often is connected to the um, tone arm wires, would go to the signal ground. And when you do that it, with a properly grounded power outlet, outlet, you will find that the overall system noise is so quiet that you actually can't tell it's on until you actually drop the needle onto the record. Your next decision is input one or input two. Um, input one is only unbalanced RCAs. Input two can be either unbalanced RCA or balanced XLRs. In either case, each input can be either fixed 47K load for a typical moving magnet cartridge or um, an adjustable load for a moving coil, which allows you to vary the cartridge loading from 5 ohms to 999 ohms using these two knobs here. Those two dedicated to input one, these two dedicated to input two, whether it be RCA or XLR. The advantage of having fully adjustable cartridge loading is that often the cartridge load as suggested by the manufacturer is a suggestion. It's not necessarily the best load for your particular phono cartridge. What I suggest one does is they look up what the appropriate settings are for that cartridge, maybe consult magazines or reviews, see what other people have said, and um, set there to start. And the way you do that we have to flip to the front to do this, but there is something here called measure mode. And when you press this select button, it turns this front panel meter into an ohm meter. It actually reads cartridge load directly. So with that set, you can reach around to the back here and set to exactly 33 ohms, if that's what your cartridge suggested load is, um, or 50 ohms, or 100 ohms, or whatever the number is. It's a little fiddly because you're moving a, um, a small amount to get small changes, but you can get an exact number set. Uh, the other thing you can do is set, for example, one input can be set for moving coil, one could be set for moving magnet. You could have one as your stereo moving coil, one as a mono moving magnet. And there are front panel controls that allow you to do that. There's also a set of dip switches here that you use um, to determine what the settings will be for each uh, input, and there's a little printed chart so you know how to do it. Once you've defined all your inputs, then what we have here are your output choices. You have a set of balanced and a set of unbalanced outputs. They are independent. You can run them simultaneously if you want to. I'm not sure why you would, but they're available for you should you need to. And we do always suggest if you have it available to use balanced, it will be typically uh, a quieter setup if you do that. This is an overall mute which uh, completely 
silences the output, so you can leave the unit electrically on, put it in mute, and make any wiring changes you want to make without affecting um, making any noises or anything like that. This switch here switches between input 1 and input 2. This one uh, invokes a high-pass filter, so it's a very gentle, low-frequency roll-off in case you've got feedback or a rumble problem or something that you need a little less bass um, to cure. This switch here, which switches between moving coil and moving magnet, and you have a true mono mode to run the phono preamp um, purely as a mono preamp. All of those settings are remembered for which input you assign them to. So you can make, as I said before, you could make one input your regular stereo moving coil, you make your other one your mono moving magnet, switch between them, and all the settings move appropriately. You can see here that we have a dividing line between what is the power supply side and what is the circuitry side. Uh, following selection, the signal goes through um, an all uh, FET balanced preamplifier section into a MOSFET driver section, which then uh, drives the uh, equalization. And we do that using very, very precise resistors and capacitors. Um, the accuracy of our RIAA equalization is better than 0.2 dB which is very, very close to being exact. And you'll find that in this price range, you typically don't, don't get anything that's closer than half or maybe even one dB. Following the equalization circuitry, then it goes to a, a driver stage, which drives the output jacks that we, we talked about before. There's uh, a dozen uh, very, very low noise precision voltage regulators that come after our power supply to make sure every single stage gets the clean power that it needs to keep the, the preamp as quiet as it needs to be. We even go so far as on the front panel, of course, the meter that runs the, um, the ohm meter system to read the cartridge loading has to have a microcontroller, a little uh, computer. And because there's a little computer in there, there's a little clock that runs that, that uh, keeps the computer alive. When you are not using the front panel metering, that microcontroller actually shuts off there's what's called keep alive power, and all that's doing is waiting to see if a button is pressed. If a button is pressed, it wakes up the computer, turns on the clock, you get the metering system to work, you can make the buttons do something. As soon as that goes off, power's turned off to microcontroller, and you don't hear any system clock noises that could possibly leak through in the phone signal. And I think that covers it for PPA2.